what I've got is, is there is a piece of six by six by two uh, wood. And so I had to try and figure out, so what do, I, what do I want that thing to look like? Rather than to just throw it on the lathe and start turning, um, uh, I wanted to, to say, this is, this is what I want this, this to look like. <clears throat> um, and so I just had a couple of, I, I just you know, draw a couple of little squares, however big, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and so two inches by two inches by two inches is six by two. So I said, well, I can make it like this, uh, which is kind of deep, which is what this was. <clears throat> and um, when you, you can't get too far down into the bottom, and then you end up having to gouge this out and you get some fairly thick spots, which, make, which are prone to cracking. So, you know, a second alternative would be to, to make, um, you know, a very thin one and uh, a wider one, you know, you know with a, a wider base and a, a wider space in the, in the center. Um, the, the key with, with this material or, and or, um, you know, I've, I've got a box elder one here that I did, uh, didn't even put a finish on it, uh, but you can begin to see what happens to the to the top rim you're going to get some some kind of interesting uh, shapes when when it dries um, this was a um, a maple burl not quite as extreme uh, but you can see that there's still some 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 waviness and then this is one that's similar to this to this guy and you can just see just a little tiny bit on the top uh, so, what I, you know, what I learned from that is the longer that you can have a, <clears throat> the rim on the top, the more wave that you're going to get. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do something that's similar to the, that, that bottom one. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wet when you turn. I get... That's right. That's right. Okay. So then uh, th all I do then basically is um, <clears throat> I have a, <clears throat> well, let's see here, I'm going to put some goggles on. Face shield um, is kind of hard. I've got uh, an eye, uh, I need to enlarge it. So face shield doesn't work very well and also doesn't work well with a microphone. So these have a... <clears throat> have a um, prescription cut into them. So um, I'm just seeing now that I did this backwards. Uh, <laughs> we'll make it work. Uh, there's a little bark inclusion here, which is gonna, which is gonna make, uh, which is gonna end up being on the top. <clears throat> I glued a, a little waste block to the bottom so that I didn't have to lose that additional, you know, maybe half, three quarters of an inch out of two inches of, of material. And uh, I'll show you how I, I do a waste block. Um, basically, uh, does anybody know how to, know how to do a, a waste block? Does everybody know how to do a, a waste block no. with CA glue? Okay. Um, what, I, what I need to do is make sure I've got a pen. Yep. Uh, what you want to do is, everybody see that? Um, this, this is going to be a challenge for me, but anyhow, drawing upside down. Uh, what, I, what I do basically is to try to, try to draw or try to turn um, a piece of wood that's, that's like that and drill a, drill a hole in it that's the size of something that you can use to align it. And I just use the, the, off, the off my tailstock. Oops. Could you, could you get me a tailstock out of there? But anyhow, so you can, and what, what you do basically then is to turn this so that there's a little indentation. So that what you, what you wanna do, wow, this is hard, upside down, but anyhow. So, so I've, got, I've got a circle, <clears throat> and all you want to do then is just make a, uh, a, a real shallow bowl so that you've got a surface here to put um, 
uh, either thick or medium CA glue on, um, <clears throat> and then you can you can put you know you can glue that to even wet wood. Okay, I, I glued this on ahead of time because it takes with thick uh, and or thin or, and or medium, excuse me, it takes eight or ten minutes, <clears throat> and I didn't want this flying off, so I did this yesterday. But so then what you do with this little hole that you've got in there is if you square up, bef you know, before I cut this on the bandsaw, I squared both sides so I knew where the center was, and then took a punch and punched both sides in, you know, at those intersections. Everybody following? Okay. Um, and then basically you take the, um, um, you, you take this little glue, glue block, waste block, that again has a little dip in it. It has thick CA glue on it. And this has got just a, a little bitty point on it. Put that into the, put that into the, to the um, <coughs> indentation at the, at the center of this. Slide it down. Let it, let it sit. Even put a little weight on it if you want to. Ten minutes later, it's, it's glued on, and you're in business. So. You didn't use any accelerator? I didn't, no. I figured it'd be dry by today. So, what I do normally is... When I turn a bowl, is to um, I always do the outside of the bowl first, and this isn't any exception. You'd, you want to do the same thing. And uh, yep, little one will work just fine. Okay. Um, so, I probably should have done this ahead of time. So did you cut that first on a bandsaw? Yeah. Yeah, just a little easier. Well, it will, but I'm going to take the, you know, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this, um, let it kind of dry and then try and, uh, try and actually do the turning a month or two from now. The whole idea with this is keep it, keep it nice and, um, so the other, this is the other piece is that, that you need a, you need a, a light that will shine through that the whole, the whole principle of this is if you have wet wood and it's light enough, uh, light light in color, uh, light will shine through it if it's thin. And we use that just to determine the a fairly uniform thickness. So, uh, Ikea, like 30 bucks or something, or 20 bucks or something, I don't know. Yeah, really inexpensive. And, uh, and it's not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice bright light, which is, which is really, technology is really helping us. Okay. Okay, now I usually, I don't think this is going to be wet enough that I need to, I'm going to have a pocket full of, uh, <clears throat> this, this is, uh, this was a, a, a demonstration that, is my head in the way? On the screen? Okay. This is a demonstration that uh, <coughs> Michael Hoslick <coughs> did uh, in, at the Ohio Impo Symposium, Imposium, uh, <laughs> Symposium in uh, September. <coughs> and uh, so he gets the, 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 the credit. I'm, I don't know if he invented the, the, the thing, but I'm going to give him the, at least give him the... Uh, <coughs> No, I still have a a dry spot. 
want to make sure it's round. One of the things you want to do, uh, especially you want, you want this to be nice and round. Um, I, that was, that's a pull cut uh, as opposed to a, to a push cut. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's basically just preference. A little rattle, so I think there might still be a little. Okay, now we just pull it around. I'm gonna just <clears throat> and I, you know, a lot of people do do things <clears throat> differently than uh, than I do. Um, this one, all I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I'm gonna try and take that. Oh, So you can see in that, nah, yeah, you, you can probably see it a little bit. Um, but I, I sometimes will just draw on the side of my piece just, uh, just for reference so I can kind of see what, I'm, what I want to turn. Obviously, as soon as I turn the lathe on and cut it. Uh, but that's, that's just kind of a handy reference just so it's in your mind and hopefully then your body actually does the same thing. So now this, this waste block is uh, a little wider than the base I wanna, I wanna end up with. I'm gonna turn this over and just knock this guy off. Um, I'm going to do one other thing, and that is true up this, uh, the rim. So I'm working on the bottom. <laughs> Great big room like this, you'd think you'd have all the room you need. Now, one thing you want to do, I've cut myself a couple of times, just take the edge off that. I ought to turn it off in between, but it should be all right here. Just a touch. Yep. And this is one of those ones where Lyle Jameson will tell you, always kind of work on, this, uh, uh, on the side grain. Um, it, it ends up being easier to, to cut the wood. And tape. That's right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the flavored variety. That, <laughs> that's good. So what I try to do is get is get you know start to get my the shape the basic shape, and then creep up on the on the final shape.
I've just gotten in the habit of coming back and knocking that little piece off so you don't, and with dry wood, that's a good way to end up with a, a, a crack. I like to use um, a larger gouge for roughing and then as I get you know, down to the, the last few cuts I use a smaller, um, smaller diameter gouge and I get a, usually get a cleaner cut. Hate to drag you through this, but uh, I only had one piece of this left. So uh, I do have, uh, I contacted a guy um, in Oregon. I, I called um, Michael Hoslick and asked him where he gets his uh, wet madrone. So he gave me the name of a guy and I, and I called him and he has, uh, he has, he has Madrone because I thought maybe some of the people in the group would be interested in, uh, in turning and getting some wood and, and trying this. Um, and he sells it for, I think it's two bucks a pound or something. And so um, we, can, we can get some of this, uh, a piece the size of this, a six by six by two would be six bucks plus shipping. So, you know, <laughs> roughly, roughly, I don't know, seven, eight nine ten dollars uh if if you if we want to if anybody wants one so we can talk about that later yeah Does that come fully waxed? no it's just it's just wet, wet. Yeah, i i don't i didn't ask him how how he does it uh he says basically he just keeps the burls you know um and cuts them when when somebody needs it, when somebody wants it yeah. so when, when but it it. i would i would i'll ask him to put it in a plastic bag That'll keep the that'll keep the moisture in it, so um, so we can get some if anybody's you know if if, if anybody's interested in doing it because it's it's a it's a real easy project and it's uh, it's it's really fun. Well, I'm going to go the different direction. I want to. You can see with this piece that I'm trying to do, what I've got is this is about a two inch. Uh, glue block, and uh, the piece that I want, I want that I want that bottom to be about you know an inch and you know an inch and three eighths, a little smaller than that. Yeah, so you can see on that on that edge right there. <clears throat> I'll I'll take this off later, but I'm gonna I'm trying to get this down to that that roughly that inch and three eighths, look so that I can get the shape, the shape that I want. So, so I'll pull that down. A little bit more. Now what I'm going to do, what I, what, I, what I do then is I, I try to envision that my gouge is going to end up right here, so I'm imagining this curve coming out, the, that that curve that I drew, and that's part of why I why I draw, just so I get a, a sense of 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 the curve and the shape. Okay. Go ahead. Right, right, and I've got I've got quite a bit of quite a bit of wood left. Doesn't look like it, but yeah, you're right. That's a good point. So I'm, now I know that I'm starting to, so I'm going to back away and take a little less. So I've got about a little over an eighth of an inch <coughs> there. Um, I'm standing back and I'm looking at this curve 
and I see that curve, where am I? Yeah, I want to take a little more material out of this. Okay? I want a little more curve. It is. <laughs> Ran my original on a piece of scrap paper. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? A little bit. If I can get it. There you go. So you can see that curves needs needs it needs a little more needs to be a little more acute or deeper or whatever, yep. <clears throat> now you can do it, also do a uh, just a little shearing cut to get that, those curves to uh, blend. Because you, you, start to get, you start to have a difficult time riding the bevel when you're getting back here. I use my finger and I can feel that there's a little I normally do this with a pencil, but there's a little bump right there. That's the low spot. That's the low spot. Now I'm going to go to the, the little smaller gouge. So when I get that, oh, I'm gonna sneak this up a little closer. I this is how I catch <clears throat> these little high spots, and so I start right in right in the center of the high spot. Take a little bit, little bit, little bit. So I keep taking a little bit more off of each of the high spots until. Again, this is a permanent marker. Pencil goes away a lot easier. You can still see a little bit there, so I gotta get a little more. That isn't bad. I'm not used to this tool rest, but. Still a little mark there. You probably can't see it uh, from that on that camera, but this is a little shorter and a little rounder. Okay, we have a real interesting inclusion in this one, but that's all right. Okay. Pardon? If it, stays. if it stays, yeah. Now, one of the things that I'll be doing, you know, as we get into the the actual turning it to length or to, to the actual thickness, is uh, you want to keep this wet so it doesn't dry out. Is that water you're putting on? Yep. So I just got some water and a rag, and you use that when you sand. <coughs> Let's see one down at the bottom. I want a little different profile. This is, you know, this is the important part: is getting the outside of it the, the profile you want.
It's good. So you can sand this um, while it's on the lathe. I'm going to turn it way down. And I want to reverse it because I want the water going towards him instead of me. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah. And so you literally can just sand. It gets gooey. I usually just wipe it off on my pants. Just plain old sandpaper. This happens to, I don't know, it's, it's, not, it's not a wet or dry. Nothing special. Uh, again, you're not trying to, this is a pretty small piece. Yeah, looks good. I'll, I'll take it down to, um, Maybe two, what did I say I was going to do? Um, oh, I said sand it down to 400. Eh, that's probably more than anybody wants to bear. You getting wet? Yeah, and it, it also keeps the wood wet, which is one of the things you want. Yep. Now there's a little. Nope. That was just a mark from the sandpaper. So, uh, once again, just to keep uh, the the sandpaper from gumming up, one and two, to keep the wood wet. As soon as, huh? Right. Yeah. Not yet. It'll warp overnight. It's, it's that quick. <laughs> it might, yep. <clears throat> That's right. Okay. Now, I noticed that, uh, <clears throat> and you'll almost always find this, that the... Um, hmm, interesting. All right. We'll write it this way. That, this, that, the, that the glue block isn't dead center and it's not perfectly ground yet. So um, I like to get it round and I'm going to stay away from the uh, CA glue joint, and it'll all come off at the same, at the last time. This is still not quite, doesn't have to be perfect. I have a, a gouge that I have, let's see, you can probably see it. Nope, can't. Uh, it's over here. Okay. I've. It's a parting tool. It's a, one of those diamond-shaped parting tools that looks kind of like that. And what I do on the edge of it, then at the top, is turn is cut it on a little bit of an angle, about the angle of a dovetail a dovetail joint. And then you can you don't have to fiddle around. You just kind of go right in. This is a little, you can hear that little uh, click. You can see it's got a little tear out, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so we're ready now to turn this around. <clears throat> Make sure that that crack that I had in there is in the center and not right on the edge because basically those corners are, are what really hold. So I want to make sure we're, things seems to work the opposite of mine, but. There we go. Uh, 
could. It won't, shouldn't be a problem in that, it, in that it's wet. Again, yep. I, I screwed up and put the waste block on the wrong side. That wouldn't, should have been the side that I, that, that I cut away. So, well, mistake on my part. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, could be. One of the things that I, I always, I, I try to do, if you have um, a block of wood, you will want to have, and, and the grain is like this, you'll want, you'll get more de deformation, more deflection when it dries, uh, the further you are out towards the bark. So this log obviously was something that was like this, and so this one, you can tell I'm looking upside down. This one would have been best to have done like that because you'll get more, more deformation up there as opposed to down here because this is really almost, almost, uh, almost like quarter sawn wood. So. Yeah, you've got, well, you, the, the wood's going to, the wood's going to try to uh, go back to, it's, it's going to want to try and deform back this way. So you'll get, you'll get more wave in the rim of the bowl, and so you'll want to put your glue block on that end. And I know that, but I didn't think about it when I did this. So, John. Could, yeah. You mean on the on the in, in here? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I could. I could. I could do that because this is all this is all lost wood. Yeah. Just I don't. I I've used that three or four times in ten years. So this is just not how my mind works. No reason why you can't do that. Um, I like to. First time. It's nice. No shadows. Um, dry out, but... <clears throat> it will. Gonna... Kind of hog hog this, just get some of this material off of here. Not a lot, but. So now I've got a nice edge here. I softened the, the edge of this. Probably wouldn't hurt to do that again um, with the sandpaper. Because it's spinning and it's a fairly sharp edge and it'll cut you even if it's wet. So I, this is how I always do all my bowls is I just start at the outside edge and work my way down. So all I'm going to do now, I can get rid of that. I'm kind of low. I do, I suspect a lot of you do as well, I always look for that, that edge of my tool to be parallel with the outside edge of the bowl. So if I could turn this. <laughs> All right, we'll do it this way. Uh, no. um, so I'm, I'm always trying to envision a line on that bowl, on, on the gouge, 
that aligns with the, the outside edge. And so if there's a curve, I'm going to try to make that follow it. Now I'm about, still about an eighth. Uh, I'm probably going to turn my light on. Let's see what we have. So you can start to see through. I'm going to put this up so you can see it. Hoselik did this, and the, the, the wood, would, while it was wet, would, would just go like this. You could, you could just bend it. He, I, he was probably a 64th of an inch or less. I'm not that good. <laughs> no. Now I've got a sharp, you know, with that inclusion, I got a sharp edge, so I'm gonna have to be careful. In fact, to be safe, I'll put a, a glove, probably, yeah. No, you're gonna have so much mess all over your legs. Yeah, well, I brought some WD-40. WD-40, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. That's Yep, so I'm gonna have this, this sharp edge coming around, so I'm gonna have to be really careful that I don't get my hand <clears throat> on that. I always, just to be safe, I use this little, thickness and I just double check my what I do is I visualize <coughs> and and the, the this is this basically the light replaces the need for this yeah. I'm still just I haven't done this enough that I <laughs> um, but it is and I look down the outside edge I follow the inside and look down the outside edge and make sure that the the air space is about the same yeah you can probably only do that with wet wood would, yeah would doesn't you, flat out doesn't work Yep. You have to use a lot of water on that, I bet, in order to keep that lid lit stable enough for you to keep it going. Oh, yes. Yep. Sanding it too? I'm going to, this edge is real sharp. And now that I got that inclusion there, I want to. Yep. Okay. I do. Yeah. When as don't need it right now, but as you work your way down. Yep. You keep a hand is that what you're saying? You keep a hand on the back side for yep. vibration? Yep. You reduce the vibration? Yep. This is why I, <coughs> I like this little black one. Line that you're going to have. Is that what you're uh, using that? What do you do? I'm looking for my little black gouge. It's standing up. That's why I can't see it. Pardon? The transition line. Is that what you're using to scrape out of there? This one? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you're scraping that one. <coughs> okay. Right. Right. So you can see there's a little spot right there that looks like it's a little darker. And I'm sure my fingers will. Yep. <coughs> Confirm that.
So this is where you put your hand on the back side. And I'm going to use the, the back edge and just do a little scraping, <coughs> shear scrape. In fact, now I'm going to go in so I can get... What's that? Shear scrape on the inside. Oh, well. Do that. Danger, danger, danger. Surprisingly, that still. More, more moisture, is that what you need? Yep, always want to keep it wet. <clears throat> it gets a little dirty, we'll go. Now I'm going to work my way right on down. Wait a minute. It's got to give you enough heat to start to dry it too. Yeah, that's why you just, yeah. just keep. Moving. Yep, keep moving. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yep. I'm also not used to using these goggles. <clears throat> yeah. I just want to double check myself here. Light's doing a great job. Yeah. It's actually a second a thirty second of an inch thicker at the bottom. Well, what thickness are you actually going for? Pardon? Whatever, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, you just sort of look at it, and you, kind of, and, and you you listen, and you go, oh, how how gutsy am I? I'm not that gutsy yet. I'm just not that gutsy yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's still there, but it's it's. Yeah, that'll be fine. There he is. Why do you feel you wouldn't be easier to cut that thinner part off first? Cut what thinner part? Your deep part. This? Oh, I, I could I could cut that now. You just you just want the support from here down okay. so it doesn't wobble. And with as wet as this is, it probably isn't an issue. It's just what I'm in the habit of doing. Somebody told me that a long time ago and it seems to work. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost to the point where it would make some sense. Once again, looking, looking for this line to parallel that line. And I always try and leave it a little bit. Um, I, I leave, leave it a little thick um, so that I don't, you know, I've, got, I've got finesse with the smaller gouges later on. I am going to take some of this and get rid of it. <laughs> I did something wrong. <laughs> Hey. 
Okay, so now you can see there's a Now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that that spot right there looks to be about the same degree of redness as that. So obviously I got a high spot in the middle. I want to just double check. You know, big league guys don't do this, but <laughs> this guy does. It's still a little thicker than what I've got up above, so I'm safe. But. It is, yeah. I'm gonna come back in. You were scraping with that one too. Yep. Well, are you circling at all? Or you just... Pardon? Is that moving at all or is the dampness no. moving right now? Nope, staying still. Still, surprisingly, um, it stays incredibly stable. Well, part of it is, one, the wood was absolutely saturated with water when we started, and I'm keeping it saturated, so it's not, yeah. not drying and deflecting. Okay. Well, the inclusion's gonna be interesting. Sorry to drag you through this is a little these some of this is a little tedious. You you can do that. You can sit, you can wet sand it, the outside edge now. Um, I did the first uh, the inside. Yeah, um, I found that it just it stays uh, wet enough and stable enough that it's not really an issue. But yeah, did you all hear the question? No. Huh? No. He said, "Does it make sense to sand?" The outside edge, because there's a potential for the, you know, for the wobble. And yeah, you, you could. I haven't had a problem, uh, but I will just for the heck of it.
That's how I almost lost a finger last week. What's that? Uh, I should be sanding out here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out here it's okay because. <laughs> yep, no, you're, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. Once again. Now you're not going to use your light on the bottom. I yeah. At some point in time, you're going to drift. You're going to drift away because it's going to be thicker at the bottom, and so. Yeah, and I can't, I mean, obviously I can't get in right. to shoot it this way. How are you going to reverse down it? Um, I'll show you. Okay. I can see where I'm at, about where I'm at at the bottom. Vacuum chuck, that's what Yeah, the vacuum chuck will suck that thing right through. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I, now, is, that a, is there a line on the inside of that? Right there? Yes. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and, and that's, yep. Yep, there's a little thin spot right there. In fact, I do, I do need to try and get that out of there. You can see it now. Now I'm down far enough I can get this. <clears throat> How am I doing time rise? Yeah, and, and it's a small enough. Um, What's that? Uh, this is a Thompson. Yeah. It, it's actually the same size as this. It's yeah. It's just a small handle, which is really nice for this kind of stuff. Just just got it a couple of weeks ago. And. Kind of far away from the, my tool rest. You can still see that line. So there's a there's a um, I got. Got it. Uh. No. Okay, still go down a little bit. This is where you try and figure out <coughs> where the where you want the bottom to be. I usually just eyeball down. Five and a half. Still got some depth to play with. <clears throat> Now 
bottom of this, the corner of this, I can't get it any closer in there. So this is going to create a little bit of a challenge because I'm going to be a long ways away from my tool rest. Yep. More water. More water. do at the bottom is just get a nice <clears throat> smooth curve. Double check my depth. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I want the bottom to be pretty thin. The reason for that is I run the risk of a crack if it gets much, you know, much thicker. And right now, I'm going to be um, I got I, I I can still get quite a bit quite a bit deeper. Pretty good. So you can see I'm probably, I lose my thickness probably right about there, which is okay, I think, having done this twice or three times. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Can you briefly put the light on the other side to people over here to see what it looks like? Yeah. Yeah, because you couldn't you you couldn't see it on the yeah with on the overhead you, you could have seen it from that side. So just a, I'm not going to get too carried away sanding this because if I keep it wet enough, I can still, well, I'm going to take, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to show you how I take it off and do the bottom. Pardon? I don't think it makes much difference. Obviously, you don't get any dust. Um, the wood's really wet, and so I just, you know, you just, you just, it works really nice. I've never really tried it on a piece of wood that, <clears throat> you know, that, because uh, I usually do my bowls, I turn them twice, and so that first, um, that second turning isn't really wet, but I've never really, really tried sanding, um, you know, wet sanding on a, on a second turn bowl. I don't know if any, has anybody else tried it? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And and what when you say solvent, that would be in your mind? Oil. Obviously then you you're gonna you're gonna be locked in whatever oil you want. Okay. All right, then the next one would be to get that edge. Take this guy off. Um, wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Just hold it. <laughs> Watch you do this. Done this once myself. So all I do, all I, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, if I take that away, you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Got the flat edge right there, and just, and I keep the the solid piece. The the. Put much. I didn't think that I put too much on there, but might not be on the middle. Yeah, well. yeah that's yeah. pretty good. Yep. Go. Should come off. I know it should come off. <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it? It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. And you can see that was the amount of glue I had. So now all we have to do, let's see if I can, I'm gonna just use it, make a little jam chuck. It's about a two inch diameter. Hate that. Worked on my chuck. Snug that down just to be safe. That isn't bad. Is it anybody who has already seen, uh, you know, cutting and is isn't interested in how I do it? Uh, you know, you're you're welcome to take off. Um, and how I remove the, what am I doing here? Oh, this guy. Yep. So I know that that end is high. Probably not going to get it too much better than that. Nope, worse. Better off the way I had it. Yep. Work, did it? Pardon? <laughs> I should have pulled that up. That'll keep that from happening again.
That's how Lyle will tell us to do it, right? Yeah, that's just what I had. I mean, I've got but that's your drawing. 10 or 15 of these things at home. So I just grabbed one that was kind of close. Your drawing says two inches. Is there some reason you stayed that, that? No, that two inches is yeah, from that line to that line. What I want is going to be about an inch and three-eighths, and I'd, we'll have to see how big this is. Yeah, it's, it's a little over two inches, and so when I, when I cut that down, it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a little less. So all I'm going to do now is just make the bottom. Let's see if I've got everything locked down. Yep. Must have a gouge here somewhere. All I want to do with this is just approximate the curve on the bottom of my bowl. I can I'll just I'll just get close because I got a, I got enough wood there that's not going to be a problem I don't believe. And then I just take a piece of uh, chamois or a paper towel, put it on it, and this is why you did the, uh, you, you put the little, yeah, the little punch mark on the end. Uh, it's not bad, although it does look like it's a little off. I got enough material that I can make it work. We're going to be thicker down here, and so if if you know, all I have to do is just kind of smooth sand that in, and I can I can accommodate that little bit of uh, off centeredness. Yeah. Right. That's right. I agree. Yep.
Okay. Now I've got, I'm gonna drive this on good so I know. I wanna know how thick my bottom is. About a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little more. So I'm going to take a little bit off so I don't end up with a real deep. Yeah, it's always frustrating. You've had that happen, I'm sure. Go through the bottom. Quite hmm? Do this with a parting tool. I usually just use a um, spindle gouge to make a nice little uh, dish in the bottom. Obviously, we're running out of real estate. And I could, just to be safe, see how much I have left. And now I'm down to about a little less than a quarter, three sixteenths maybe. So I got a, an, an idea of how I, how deep I can go. to get in really tight spaces. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So there's a quite a bit of chatter on the way down from there. Yeah. Are there ridges in there? I don't think there's ridges. I just think it's the, the off-centeredness. And so now that's, that's, the, that's what you want to do now at this point would be to just try and sand that out. Uh, Wet sand again? Yeah. Uh, 
150? Yeah, 120. 120, 180, okay. 240. I'm, I'm experimenting um, with, in, in, with adding the in-between grains. You know, so I, I'm going 180, 100, 120, 150, 180 to see if I can get rid of scratches because I haven't been real happy getting with the scratch, getting rid of the scratches that I have on pieces. And so I bought more. Pardon? I, I, all I did with the the one that was over wherever is um, to do um, just a. I've got like two coats of. Um, Spray. Yeah, yeah. You can use either use lacquer or, or something. So I'll wipe this off and pass it around. What I what I then do, and I won't do it with this one. It's just too tedious, and I'd like to do a little more work. But you can see um, here. Let's take a real soft, very shallow gouge, and just just cut it away. And normally, if you've got a little more wood, you can get a lot closer. You can get down to a, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or less, and it pops right off very easily. So um, wet it down, pass it around, <coughs> and uh, that's it. And then, let, so anybody who's interested, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and place an order with uh, the Madrone guy um, and, and get him here for the next, for the next meeting. This, this six by six is kind of a nice size. It gets much larger and it might, I think it might be a little bit difficult. Um, I think the, the um, little inclusion really could be kind of interesting. So, kind of a nice shape, so. Maybe. Thank you. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.